Artemis makes Orion a man. Where is the priestess who swore she'd drive an arrow through the eye of any man who dared dream an agora onto the holy ground of my body? I muffled her protests with a shroud of dark weaved from my very own hair. I present to you now a moon-bright baldness unprotected by night, naked for you. My boy, I've lowered my defenses so you might taste the sweetness of conquer without risking that pretty neck of yours. It's almost moderately my concern, my willingness to cut away limb and word, only so I may see the dark butt of you flower, so I may at least have the honor to applaud and flush proud under the light of your triumph. My own glory, that silver white fruit, I'll pluck for you to eat if the warm days are too long. This is sweet, you say. Where does it come from? I don't remember, my love. It's just something to bite. I generally just love eating in bed. It's like one of one things mom says not to do when you're young. But I think I've always been the kind of person to just do that type of thing. Um, I think I've always been like really indulged by the people around me and by the world. I don't know if it's like something about my energy, if I have something in my eyes that makes people want to give me things. Um, and in turn, I guess I've just learned to indulge myself. I just tend to, you know, forgive myself when I make mistakes really easily, not really push myself too hard, which can be a problem. Um, and I for sure noticed this because I finished high school and I took a gap year and I didn't get into college. Um, I was really like radical and I only applied for that one thing that I wanted to do at the one university I wanted which was very competitive and very hard to get into and I didn't and somehow even though like I didn't even have a really good grade I never once really considered the fact that I could not get in and I didn't and I think this is like the first I don't know big failure I've had in my life um, and it's made me reflect a lot about that about the fact that I don't really require so much from myself and how when I started this gap year, I had a lot of big plans for what I was going to do with it because I always have big plans because I'm just such an idealist and I was like, I'm going to finish like both these books on the theology I'm writing and I'm going to finish my poetry collection and I'm going to do this and that and I didn't do any of it, I haven't finished any of my works um, I haven't finished any of the short stories I was planning, haven't really submitted, submitted anything even though that was one of my big like goals for this year to build up the courage to submit stuff for literary magazines and honestly i don't feel too bad about it like how much worth have i gained from all the other things i did with the time and could have used to accomplish those goals how many feelings have i experienced that i haven't before i guess i just don't really understand why i would be hard on myself for not achieving the things that i haven't achieved it's not like I'm going anywhere, you know, I still have time to do everything and if I haven't finished it yet, maybe it's because it isn't the time for it, maybe because the next months I will learn and experience things that will improve me as a person and a writer to the point where I can, you know, finish these books in a way with a quality, with an impact I couldn't have before. When I got to, like the rejection letter, I was really I, I don't know like the second i got it i suppose i was sad and i was a little shocked but honestly now that it's been like a week i realized that that really is what i wanted i wanted to stay in rio more i wanted to have more time here with the people i would leave behind and i wanted to have more time without like the restrictions and time that university would cause i don't know to just work on my personal projects I want to start painting, I want to start videoing more, I want to learn how to cook and bake better, to sew, to embroider, to crochet and knit, um, I want to listen to more music, I want to, I don't know, there's so much things I want to do, and I think it's really a blessing that I've gotten this extra time. And you know, some people view that as like a fault, 
some people will say i'm lazy or that i don't work hard enough and i'm fine with that i've i don't know I, i've thought so much as a poet you always think so much about yourself artists are so egocentric but you know i've reflected so much about myself and worked upon myself as like my magnum opus um and i realized that i'm just that kind of person you know the kind of person who eats in bed and wakes up late and doesn't feel bad about it um you know the kind of person who eats dessert before lunch and who watches movies when she should be working and buys really expensive lingerie and everyone's like why are you spending so much money on undergarments and i'm like because they're beautiful and i want to be beautiful on every layer of my being i'm the kind of person who loves flowers as gifts and hates people who hate flowers because i just can't grasp the idea of you know not adoring beauty just because it dies so that's what i've been thinking about um while eating my shrimp and I hope the world continues to indulge me enough to keep me like this because I don't ever want to be that person who doesn't like getting flowers, who would rather have something that lasts forever. I don't want to be the kind of person who, you know, doesn't care about a pattern of the ways in my lingerie. I always want to be the person who's looking for beauty everywhere and who, you know, surrenders to the hands of the world, whether it be, they be kind of cruel. So that's that, I'm gonna eat my shrimp. I've been dreaming dreams of girls who died girls, in the looking glass shrouded by jasmine mist and flushed with the balmy breath of casual rebirth. Phantoms with wax cheeks and chocolate curls flower into this pallid bed, craying languid wrists out of their lines, the dead as they rise from the earth.